Before we can start working on our project, we have to install some important software. And the first software that we're going to install is the XAMPP. And I will show you how you can download and install it. So in Google, you can just uh, search for XAMPP. And then we can just uh, go to www.apachefriends.org. So this should be the first URL for you. As you can see, XAMPP is Apache, MariahDB, or MySQL, PHP, and Perl. Now, obviously, Perl is not important for us. And XAMPP uh, is the most popular PHP development environment. It's completely free and an easy to install Apache distribution, uh, which contains MariahDB and the PHP. And these will be important for our project. Because I'm on a Windows machine, I'm going to uh, download XAMPP for Windows. But as you can see, there is XAMPP for Linux and XAMPP for the Mac OS as well. So let me download XAMPP for Windows. My download should start. Yeah, it has started. As you can see, it's 157 megabytes, so it can take a bit of time to download. And the thing is about XAMPP is that we will develop our application locally. And this is why you need it. So uh, we will have Apache for local development and we will of course uh, have our own MariahDB as well or MySQL and of course if you have already installed XAMPP you can just skip this step or skip this video however if you don't have XAMPP then uh, you should uh, stay with me and you should install XAMPP as I do so let me just uh, click on the downloaded file okay it's fine we can just continue with the installation. It's not a problem that we have an antivirus. I mean, I have never had uh, problems uh, because of that. Uh, so I, I suggest you just uh, continue with the installation. Okay, this uh, warning, it doesn't matter. So you can just click on OK. It will not cause any problems. And yeah, we are finally in the XAMPP setup wizard. Click on Next. Actually, I will just install everything. But if you don't want to install that many things, then you have to install Apache. I mean, you, you cannot even uh, disable Apache or deselect Apache. Uh, you need MySQL for sure, and you need PHP, but you cannot deselect PHP, and uh, you should install PHP MyAdmin as well. So this should be the, the minimum uh, that you select. However, I will just go ahead and uh, install everything. Okay, I will uh, install it in the um, XAMPP folder in my C drive. This is the default option. All right, the language is English, so it's fine. And actually, I don't want to learn more about Bitnami for XAMPP, so you can just uh, uh, deselect this checkbox and you can just click on Next. And uh, setup now uh, is now ready to begin installing XAMPP, so click on Next again. And, it's, is, and it is being installed for you. If everything has been smooth, then you should see this completing the XAMPP setup wizard window. And actually this uh, checkbox is checked and it's fine because we want to uh, start the control panel now. So you can just click on finish. And as you can see, this is the XAMPP control panel. So what is important for us is that we have to start MySQL and we have to start Apache. So let's start MySQL. Okay, it's running. But uh, we also have to start Apache, and it is running as well. Apache and MySQL should run for you all the time. So, I mean, when you are working on our demo application, it is a must that uh, these two are running. What we have to do now is to create a database. So you can just come here to this admin checkbox in the MySQL row, or admin button, sorry, in the MySQL row. And once I click on it, I will come to the localhost slash php my admin route. So this is my php my admin where I can create a new database. And this is exactly what we are going to do. So you have to click on new and we will create, create a database for our uh, demo application. I will call it Sonic Payments, Sonic underscore payments. You can choose a different name for it. However, you should uh, remember what the name is because we will need it later. So you can just uh, leave all the settings as they are and you can just click on create. And now we have an empty database. So as you can see, this is your XAMPP control panel. We already saw this. And if you want to start XAMPP, you can just search for XAMPP and you will see the XAMPP control panel here. I will, of course, not uh, start it again. 
Uh, if you're finished with your work, of course, you can just stop uh, MySQL and Apache, uh, but then you will not be able to reach PHP MyAdmin. And what is important uh, about XAMPP is that uh, I will navigate to where I installed it. So on my C drive, there is a XAMPP folder and there is an htdocs folder. If you're also using the default settings and um, you installed XAMPP on your C drive, then you should also have this htdocs folder here. And this is actually where we will put our demo project, so uh, where we will clone the repository from GitHub. The next software we are going to install is Composer. Composer is a dependency manager for PHP, so we will need Composer to install the Stripe SDK, for example, or the Braintree SDK. However, we need Composer to install Laravel itself and its dependencies. So we can just uh, search for Composer in Google. And as you can see, we have this getcomposer.org link, so we can click on it. And yeah, it is exactly a, a dependency manager for PHP. We can just go to download. And because I'm on a Windows machine, I will just use the Windows installer. However, if it's not a good option for you, you can just follow the installation guide on getcomposer.org. As you can see, it's nicely documented. However, I would like you to notice that PHP has to be installed in a computer already, and of course we did it, so uh, we installed PHP through XAMPP. So if you are following following my lead, so to say, then um, it will be uh, totally all right for you. But if you are not following me, then make sure that you um, installed PHP. And uh, as you can see, uh, this installer will download Composer for you and set up your path environment. So you can call sim uh, so you can simply call the composer command from any directory. So let's just download and run the composer uh, setup.exe. Okay, it's already uh, downloaded. So let's just click on it, and I will install it for all users. You can just click yes, and um, actually, you know, I will not click um, this option developer mode. It's completely fine for me if um, if I just uh, install Comp uh, Composer as it is. All right, so here you have to choose the command line PHP you want to use. Now, as you can see, I uh, installed ZAMP. So I have C, uh, C uh, ZAMP PHP PHP.exe, and this is completely uh, fine for me. But if you didn't use ZAMP or, you know, for whatever reason, uh, this is not the uh, path for you for your php.exe, then make sure that uh, you choose the correct uh, php.exe file here. Okay, I will uh, click on next. I don't need to use a proxy, so I will just click on next. And setup is now ready to download Composer and install it on your computer. Uh, everything seems to be fine, so we have a php 8.0.1. Uh, this is the correct path for my php.exe and um, I, I'm not using a proxy, so I can just click on install. And it seems everything is fine. However, you, have to, uh, you should um, check this information. You must open a new command window to use Composer for the first time because your environment has changed and running programs may not be aware of this. If this does not work, you will have to do one of the following. Close all file explorer windows, then open a new command window, or log off and log on again, then open a new command window. As a last resort, you may need to restart your computer. Now let me just click on next. And we are completing the Composer setup. So Composer has been installed, and I can click on finish. But we are not finished, so I just read you the information that we have to open a command line. So let me just... Uh, open a command prompt. Uh, I will run it as an administrator. All right. And what I will put in is composer dash dash version. So this should give me the composer version that I have installed. And indeed, composer version 2.0.9. Uh, uh, this is the version that we installed. So everything is fine. But if it's not working for you, so you know, if you cannot see this, then um, the best is to log off, log on and restart your computer and then um, run, uh, I'm then uh, open a command prompt as an administrator and then retry this command. So composer dash dash version. And if you see this or if you see your composer version, maybe you have downloaded a newer one already, then everything is fine with composer. 
Next, we are going to install Git on our computer. Git is a version control system. We need it because our demo application is on GitHub. So when you have to clone our Git repository, of course, I will show you how to do that later. But it's important to have Git installed on your computer. Otherwise, you will not be able to pull or clone or, you know, like copy our demo application onto your machine. So I will just uh, search for Git in Google. And uh, this is the uh, first result. So you can just click on this one. And actually, uh, I can just uh, download this uh, latest source release. So download 2.30 uh, for Windows. However, you can also go to the downloads and, and um, download the uh, GUI client. Uh, however, uh, this is the simplest for me. As you can see, the download has already started. I'm downloading the 64-bit version for, for Windows. Um, and uh, if the download doesn't start, you can click here to download it manually. And of course, there are other Git, other Git versions for Windows, so like 32-bit, whatever. But I, I think like Git should be really good at uh, guessing your, your Windows uh, architecture. So if everything is fine, you will, be, you will have already downloaded the correct uh, Git version and or correct git installer so let me just click on it let's install and actually git will ask you many questions uh, during the installation process however i will always choose the default option so i will just click on next um, this uh, path is fine for me okay so for me it already exists of course i had to uh, uninstall git uh, and then now i'm reinstalling it for you so for me it's completely fine that uh, that we are installing into this folder which already exists all right so you can select the components here now um, actually you know i don't need a desktop icon but you can get a desktop icon if you check this but uh, this is totally fine for me okay the shortcut in the start menu okay that's fine and now um, you can uh, change the default editor for, for Git. As you can see, you can choose Atom, Sublime, Visual Studio Code, whatever. Uh, now Visual Studio is, uh, Code is not um, installed on my computer. Uh, uh, it will be later. Uh, however, I, you know, using Vim is totally fine. All right, let's click on Next. Um, yeah, I will let git decide, so we can adjust the uh, name of the initial branch in new repos repositories, but I think it's totally fine if uh, git decides this for us. And git uh, from the command line and from third-party software, so we can adjust in the path environment, and I think that uh, the recommended option is uh, uh, totally fine for us. Uh, use the OpenSSL library, yes, um, this, is, this is fine as well check out windows style commit unix style line endings you can change this but i i really don't think that um, you should i mean at least if you are following my my videos then this option should be perfect for you uh, we don't have to use the windows default console window so we are fine with the mini tty yeah we can fast forward or merge so we are choosing now the default behavior for git pull request and, and this is uh, completely fine. Uh, actually, I don't git credential have, I don't really think that I'm using this, but I mean, this git credential manager core should be um, fine for us, especially because, you know, uh, this one is deprecated. And uh, yeah, I don't think it matters if we choose none or git credential manager core, but you know, let's just stay, stick with git credential manager core. Uh, we can enable file system uh, caching and uh, we, we don't need the experimental support uh, for pseudo console, console so if you want you can select this option but uh, i will just go ahead and finally install git i don't think that there is any other installation process that asks you asks you so many questions okay and finally git has been installed on our computer Let's check if Git has been successfully installed on our computer. So I will just um, open a command prompt as an administrator. And the command that I'm going to run in is uh, git dash dash version. And it should give me back uh, the installed Git version. All right, Git version 2.30.0.windows.2. Perfect. As you can see, this is exactly the version that I have installed. I'm going to install Visual Studio Code. 
and this is my favorite code editor of course you are free to use another code editor but if you're fine with visual studio code then you can just follow in this video so obviously i will just search for visual studio code and here is the first result and i can just download the stable build for windows all right the download uh, has started it shouldn't take much time to download the whole installer and we can just click on the exe file okay we of course have to accept the um, agreement you can click on next uh, this is fine for me you know the default destination or default path if it's not of course you should adjust it click on next yeah i'm fine with the start menu setting and yeah add to path i i will uh, leave this um, option selected uh, i want to actually create a desktop icon and yeah i think uh, i think uh, this is totally fine so i will click on next and i can just quickly check my settings yeah it's fine so i will just install and after we are finished we can launch visual studio code so you can we can click on finish and if you uh, don't untick this checkbox then visual studio code should start for you and indeed we see the welcome page i can just close this one i will uh, start a new terminal actually i'm not going to run any com commands now but what i wanted to show you is that i have bash um, as my default terminal you might have something else and uh, actually you should have um, an uh, op opportunity to choose uh, between the the terminals so i recommend bash but of course you know if you have something else then uh, then i think you already know what to do actually what i would like to do is install some extensions so it will be easier for us to develop a laravel application so click on this uh, icon and as you can see i don't have any extensions installed there are some recommended extensions and these are totally fine but i will not install these extensions but i will show you which extension i will install first i will search for the laravel extension pack extension okay laravel extension i think this is it the third one from the top no oh second one from the top sorry uh, laravel extension pack and as you can see, we will get um, debug support for PHP, this editor, config, um, .m file syntax. Now, th these are not very important for us, I think. But what is important, IntelliFence, so code intelligence for Visual Studio Code, Blade uh, snippets, uh, uh, we can run artisan commands, we can go to views, so it will, um, it will help us to navigate better in Visual Studio Code within our Laravel application if we get this installed. So I will install this one which is actually you know, a package of uh, extensions. And there will be one other that I will install. Okay, all right, so these are installed for me. And uh, let me just uh, delete this. Uh -huh. As you can see that this uh, .m, editor, config, and so on and so on have been installed for me. And the only one uh, uh, that I want to install is uh, this one, the PHP IntelliSense. So auto completion and refactoring for PHP I'm, I'm used to this, so, so I will I'll go ahead and install this one. All right, this has been installed as well. So it's here. So we have all our extensions installed. There is one other thing that I want to show you. So you can go to File, Preferences, Settings. And let's type IntelliFence.Diagnostics. Now it uh, might happen later in the course that um, IntelliFence will mark um, lines of code errors, which are actually not errors. And uh, what I suggest is that you come to this um, IntelliFence diagnostics um, options in the settings. And what you can do is to tick this box. So you can um, enable undefined uh, class interface and trait diagnostics. Or uh, what you can do is to untick this uh, box, this uh, undefined symbols. I believe that uh, it should be unticked. Uh, so I, I think we are fine if both are unticked. We will not see any errors. But it might happen if it's not unticked. So if uh, the undefined symbols is ticked, then it might happen that some lines of code will be shown to you as erroneous. However, they are not. So I, I believe this is the best way to, to go about in IntelliFence. 
So I will just close the settings and we are finished with installing Visual Studio Code.